Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we'll be looking at following his steps Tuesday of Holy Beska week. And in Tuesday of Holy Beska week, we'll be looking at the Eve of Tuesday and Holy Tuesday itself. And on this day, what we'll find is that the Eve of Tuesday looks at how it is the bride can prepare herself for her bridegroom. And the day of Tuesday is a look more at the bridegroom, our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Cyril of Alexandria, in his commentary on the Gospel according to St. Luke, says to us, A ship is guided to the port by the means of the helm, but the Word of God pilots the soul of a man and leads him without rise of error to everything that is necessary of salvation. The ship, the helm of the ship directs the ship to the port, our port being heaven, and that ship being our soul. Now the one who directs that ship is the Word of God, who is our bridegroom. And today I'd like us to look at not only what we as the bride can do, but what it is that the bridegroom does and is and who he is for each one of us. As we follow his steps to the cross, the steps of our Lord and Savior, our precious and glorious Bridegroom. As we begin the Eve of Tuesday, we look as the Church is preparing herself for her Bridegroom. It's the inner preparation that's necessary for the Bride to meet her Bridegroom. Just as a Bride would begin to prepare herself for that glorious day of her wedding day, the church, the soul of each individual, should also prepare herself to meet her bridegroom. Her bridegroom is waiting in glory, and so the bride should also be adorned in beauty and in glory, and there's certain ways that we can prepare ourselves to meet our King Jesus, who's sitting on his throne. We're called to light the inner lamp with vigil and prayer and repentance. And the evening prophecies look to great, the great love of our Lord, despite our wicked and sinful nature. So the first thing that we're called to do is repentance and walking the narrow way. The first hour of the prophecies of the eve of Tuesday it's a call of repentance, and it's a call to repentance, and this repentance that we can turn back to God, that we can have a change of mind and put on the mind of Christ, is a grace in itself. It's the grace of God that allows us to turn back to Him. It is His work that opens the door for us to approach to Him. Repentance is the first step in meeting our bridegroom. For it's our declaration of love to him. It's the way that we tell him, we love you. We know though we ran after others, we love you, Lord. And we repent, we turn back to you, and we walk the straight and narrow path. In the third hour prophecy of the eve of Tuesday, the call is to embrace him. It's that we would Come to Him and surrender our will to Him. It's not simply enough that the grace of God would work in us, but in Orthodoxy we speak of the grace of God working in synergy with the will of man. And this is the way that we embrace Him, is by submitting and surrendering our will to God, to our precious Bridegroom. Our Lord declares His love to us when He says, How often I wanted to gather you to me. How often I wanted to gather you under my arms. See, our Lord has his arms wide open for us. And he's calling us to reach our arms and to embrace him and to accept his love and his grace. In the sixth hour prophecy of the eve of Tuesday, the call is a call to obey him. It's one of obedience. And this obedience comes through watching 
and prayer. In the book of Hosea, we find that we discover our own harlotry, that we have chased after another bridegroom, we've chased after another husband, we've chased after another one that we can love. And this harlotry has led us away from life in Christ. Luke chapter 21 verse 34 speaks about the carousing and the drunkenness and the cares of life that consume us when we're apart from Christ. And so we're called to obey Him. And this obedience can come by simply life in Christ, watching and praying. To have true obedience to Christ, it's not one of complete self-control and seeing how I can control myself and how I can stop doing bad things because it is the grace of God that works in us that allows us to control ourselves. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, St. Paul speaks to us about the fruit of the Spirit. And one aspect of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. See, it's not that we can control ourselves simply by trying to be better people, but it's the Spirit of God, the grace of God working in us, working in synergy with our will, that allows us, as we watch and pray, to be obedient and live a life of obedience to His will and to His word. In the ninth hour prophecy, we're called to accept Him, to accept our bridegroom, to accept our Lord, and to avoid hypocrisy. And one of the ways that we avoid hypocrisy is by manifesting love by manifesting the work of God's love in us. In Luke chapter 11, the gospel of this hour, Christ says, Now you Pharisees make the outside of the cup and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. He goes on to say, He did not he who made the outside make the inside also, but rather give alms of such things as you have that indeed all things are clean to you. See, he's saying, don't worry about making your main focus to clean the outside of the cup. Clean the inside, and the outside will be clean, cleansed also. And one of the ways that we cleanse the inside is by almsgiving, by living a life of love. Because alms is not simply giving money, but it's a manifestation of our love. And when our love is moved, we give. And finally, the 11th hour prophecy of the eve of Tuesday, wait for him and keep watch. Wait for him and keep watch. We as the church, the bride of Christ, need to wait for him and keep watch. In the early days, the old ages, the groom would come and the bride was waiting. Well, nowadays, <laughs> it's usually the other way around. So this idea is foreign to us. But in the old days, the bride would wait anxiously for her groom to come and to take her to their new kingdom, their new house. As we turn our attention away from the eve of Tuesday to Holy Tuesday itself, we turn our attention away from how it is that the bride can prepare herself to the glory of the bridegroom. Let's look at the bridegroom sitting on his throne, our King of Kings, King Jesus, our husband, our precious groom. The focus is on the Lord is our bridegroom. In the first hour, we're told that we should have a heart for God, that we should seek oneness with God, to know Him, to be one with Him. The righteous keep a heart for God. Do you have a soft heart? or a hard heart. In Hosea chapter 4, we're told that my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. In the scripture, the idea of knowledge is not just simply an intellectual knowledge, but a knowing, an intimacy, a oneness with another person. So the fact that we've rejected knowledge of God means that we've rejected oneness of God.
intimacy with with God. In the scripture, in the scripture, it doesn't say that Adam and Eve had intimacy with each other, but rather that they knew one another. And we're called to know God, to have a knowledge of Him, to be one with Him. The first hour, God offers us, our precious bridegroom offers us oneness with Him. In the third hour of Holy Tuesday, we're told that in the midst of tribulation, our bridegroom provides for us. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 15, we find how it is that the bridegroom led his people and provided for them in the midst of the wilderness. He asks them the question, Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water? Christ led us through the wilderness where there was no life. And there was just tribulation and temptation and attacks. Our bridegroom is a provider. He offers us oneness and he offers us provision. In the sixth hour, we find something very important about our bridegroom. That he is just. God is just. And there's two important aspects of his justice. Usually when we think of justice, justice means that if you did something wrong, you deserve a punishment for it. That's the way that the penal system in this country works. If you do something wrong, you deserve a punishment. If you speed 20 miles over the speed limit, you get a ticket. If you rob the bank, you deserve jail time. The justice of God will look at two important aspects of it. Firstly, Sirach chapter 5, verse 1, he tells the people do not rely on your wealth. In other words, if you rely on something other than me, if you seek after sin, the things of the world, those things will not provide for you. That justice will come. The second important part is in the previous chapter, Sirach chapter 4, verse 26. He tells us, do not be ashamed to confess your sins. Do not be ashamed to confess your sins. See, the justice of God works two ways. One is if we continue to reject Him and to seek after other riches and other things apart from Him, that those things will never be enough and that eventually judgment and justice will come. But the second important aspect is that if we confess our sins, if we repent and turn back to Him, that we will find mercy. And this mercy is an important aspect of the divine justice. In the ninth and 11th hour prophecy of Holy Tuesday, we find the emphasis is on the second coming. In the ninth hour, the message is to prepare yourself with repentance and living the sacramental life. And in the 11th hour, the image is on the king sitting on his throne. And this is when we chant this beautiful hymn, Pick a Thronos. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. That the throne of God, the place of judgment, thank God for us, it's a place of righteous judgment. As we continue following his steps, we find ourselves inching closer and closer to the cross. The throne of God, the place where he reigns, Supreme, the King over all the earth, our bridegroom awaits for us as we prepare ourselves to meet him on his throne. <laughs>